Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. So I figured I would come on and read this morning while nobody is awake. Um, I may need to go get some coffee here in a minute because I'm almost out. But uh, we shall read more of the book of uh, Enoch. We are currently at chapter 12 and we had read for um, two hours and approximately a quarter of the book. We're on page 62 of 193. There are over a hundred and five chapters, which means these chapters got to start getting shorter and shorter. Otherwise, um, <laughs> this is only going to be part of the book. Um, and I would have to then find another uh, source to finish the rest of the book. But um, we won't worry about that right now. We will just continue reading. Um, let me close that out. So I was looking for a prayer um, that isn't associated with uh, the canonized uh, Bible. And I know in um, the book of Enoch is not part of the canonized uh, Catholic Bible. But it is part of the canonized Ethiopian Bible. And um, that's how we have it today. I have it in uh, the description, a little summary that I got from uh, this text. Basically, uh, around the 1800s, um, they came into Ethiopia, found the book, and they were like, oh, what is this? And basically, this book had been lost into history. We got a reference of it in Jude. Um, so the apostles knew about it, um, talked favorably about it. And then, um, you know, here we are today. Uh, it's funny because some people will act like nobody knows about this book or something. But here it is on the Internet, uh, translated in English for any uh, nincompoop like you or me to uh, read. So um, we'll get started here. I'll do a little prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, Lord, we ask you to have uh, the Holy Spirit guide us as we read this text and have it uh, commit fully to your will and fill us with the knowledge to fully commit to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's get started. We're on, it says chapter one, but I have another uh, backup that kind of shows you uh, what chapter we are associated with the 105. And currently we're at 12. So um, we'll just start reading and see how far we get. Boom. This one's going to be starting with the birth of Noah. Let me make it a little bigger. Let's see how that looks. There we go. And after some days, my son Methshula took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became pregnant by him and bore a son. And his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose, and the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool, and his eyes beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house was very bright. And thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of righteousness. And his father Lamech was afraid of him and fled and came to his father Methshula. And he said to him, I have begotten a strange son, diverse from, from and unlike man, and resembling the son of the God of heaven. And his nature is different, and he is not like us. And his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his countenance is glorious. And it seems to me that he is not sprung from me, but from the angels. And I fear that in his days a wonder may be wrought on the earth. 
And now my father, I am here to petition thee and implore thee that thou mayest go to Enoch, our father, and learn from him the truth. For this dwelling place is amongst the angels. And when Methshula heard the words of his son, he came to me to the ends of the earth. For he had heard that I was there, and he cried aloud, and I heard his voice, and I came to him. And I said unto him, Behold, here I am, my son, wherefore hast thou come to me? And he answered and said, Because of a great cause of anxiety have I come to thee, and because of a disturbing vision have I approached. And now, my father, hear me, unto Lamech, my son, there hath been born a son, and like of whom there is none, and his nature is not like man's nature, and the color of his body is whiter than snow, and redder than the bloom of a rose, and the hair of his head is whiter than white wool, and his eyes are like the rays of the sun." And he opened his eyes, and thereupon lighted up the whole house. And he arose in the hands of the midwife, and opened his mouth, and blessed the Lord of heaven. And his father Lamech became afraid, and fled to me, and did not believe that he, had, that he was sprung from him, but that he was in the likeness of the angels of heaven. And behold, I have come to thee, that thou mayest make known to me the truth. And I, Enoch, answered and said unto him, The Lord will do a new thing on the earth. And this I have already seen in a vision. And make known to thee that in the generation of my father, Jared, some of the angels of heaven and tra has transgressed the word of the Lord. And behold, they commit sin and transgress the law and have united themselves with women and commit sin with them and have married some of them and have begot children by them. And they shall produce on the earth giants, not according to the spirit, but according to the flesh. And there shall be a great punishment on the earth, and the earth shall be cleansed from all impurity. Yeah, there shall come a great destruction over the whole earth, and there shall be a deluge and a great destruction for one year. And this son who has been born unto you shall be left on the earth and his three children shall be saved with him. When all mankind that are on the earth shall die, he and his son shall be saved. And now make known to thy son Lamech that he who has been born is in truth his son and call his name Noah for he shall be left to you. And he and his sons shall be saved from the destruction which shall come upon the earth, on account of all the sin and all the unrighteousness, which shall be consummated on the earth in his days. And after that, there shall be still more unrighteousness than that which was first consummated on the earth. For I know the mysteries of the holy ones, for he, the Lord, has showed me and informed me, and I have read in the heavenly tablets, and I saw written on them that generation upon generation shall transgress, till a generation of, of righteousness arises, and transgression is destroyed, and sin passes away from the earth. And all manner of good comes upon it. And now, my son, go and make known to thy son Lamech that his son, which has been born, is in truth his son, and that is no lie. And when Methshula had heard the words of his father Enoch, 
for he had shown to him everything in secret. He returned and showed to him and called the name of that son Noah, for he will comfort the earth after all the destruction. So this shall be chapter 13. And in those days, Noah saw that the earth, that it had sunk down and its destruction was nigh. And he arose from thence and went to the ends of the earth and cried aloud to his grandfather Enoch. Noah said three times with an embittered voice, hear me, hear me, hear me. And I said unto him, Tell me what it is that is falling out on the earth, that the earth is in such evil plight and shaken, lest perchance I shall persist with it. And thereupon there was a great commotion on the earth, and a voice was heard from heaven, and I fell on my face. And Enoch, my grandfather, came and stood by me, and said unto me, why hast thou cried unto me with a bitter cry and weeping? A command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth, that their ruin is accomplished because they have learnt all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the Satans and all their powers, the most secret ones. And all the power of those who practice sorcery, and the power of witchcraft, and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth, and how silver is produced from the dust of the earth, and how soft metal originates in the earth. For lead and tin are not produced from the earth like the first, it is a fountain that produces them. And the angel stands therein, and that angel is permanent. And after that, my grandfather Enoch took hold of me by my hand and raised me up and said unto me, Go, for I have asked the Lord of Spirits as touching this commotion on the earth. He cried, and he said unto me, Because of the unrighteousness, their judgment has been determined upon and shall not be withheld by me forever because of the sorceries which they have searched out and learnt the earth and those who dwell upon it shall be destroyed and these they have no place of repentance forever because they have shown them what was hidden and they are the damned but as for thee my son the lord of spirits knows thou art pure and guiltless of the reproach concerning the secrets and he has destined thy name to be among the holy, and will preserve thee amongst those who dwell on the earth, and has destined thy righteous seed both for kingship and for great honors, and from thy seed shall proceed a fountain of the righteous and holy without number forever. And after that, he showed me the angels of punishment who were prepared to come and let loose all the powers of the waters, which are beneath in the earth in order to bring judgment and destruction on all who dwell on the earth. And the Lord of Spirits gave commandment to the angels who were going forth that they should not cause the water to rise, but should hold them in check. For those angels were over the powers of the waters. And I went away from the presence of Enoch. So this is chapter 14. And in those days the word of God came unto me. And he said unto me, Noah, thy lot has come up before me a lot without blame, a lot of love and a brightness. And now the angels are working, and when they have completed their task, I will place my hand upon it and preserve it, and there shall come forth from it the seed of life. 
and a change shall set in so that the earth will not remain without inhabitant. And I will make fast thy seed before me forever and ever, and I will spread abroad those who dwell with thee. It shall not be unfruitful on the face of the earth, but it shall be blessed and multiply on earth in the name of the Lord. And he will imprison those angels who have shown unrighteousness in that burning valley, which my grandfather Enoch had formerly shown to me in the West among the mountains of gold and silver and iron and soft metal and tin. And I saw that valley in which there was a great convulsion and convulsion of the waters. And when all this took place from that fiery molten metal, and from the convulsion thereof in that place, there was produced a smell of sulfur, and it was connected with those waters. And that valley of the angels who had led astray burned beneath that land. And through its valley proceeds streams of fire, where these angels are punished, who had led astray those who dwell upon the earth. But those waters shall in those days serve for the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who dwell on the earth for the healing of the body, but for the punishment of the spirit. Now their spirit is full of lust that they may be punished in their body. For they have denied the Lord of spirits and see their punishment daily yet believe not in his name. And in portion, as the burning of their bodies becomes severe, a corresponding change shall take place in their spirit forever and ever. For before the Lord of spirits, none shall utter an idle word. For the judgment shall come upon them, because they believe in the lust their body and deny the spirit of the Lord. And those same waters will undergo a change in those days. For when these angels are punished in these waters, these water springs shall change their temperature. And when the angels ascend, this water of the springs shall change and become cold. And I heard Michael answering and saying, This judgment wherewith the angels are judged is a testimony for the kings and the mighty who possess the earth. Because these waters of judgment minister to the healing of the body of the kings and the lust of their body, therefore they will not see and will not believe that those waters will change and become a fire which burns forever. So this would be chapter 15. And after that, my grandfather Enoch gave me the teaching of all the secrets in the book, in the parables which had been given to him. And he put them together for me in the words of the book of the parables. And on that day, Michael answered Raphael and said, The power of the Spirit transports and makes me to tremble because of the verity of the judgment of the secrets and the judgment of the angels who can endure the severe judgment which has been executed and before which they melt away. And Michael answered again and said to Raphael, who is he whose heart is not softened concerning it and whose reins are not troubled by his word of judgment? that has gone forth upon them because of those who have thus led them out. And it came to pass when he stood before the Lord of Spirits. Michael said thus to Raphael, I will not take their part under the eye of the Lord, for the Lord of Spirits has been angry with them, because they do as if they were the Lord. Therefore, all that is hidden shall come upon them forever and ever. For neither angel nor man shall have his portion, but alone they have received their judgment forever and ever. And after this judgment, they shall 
terrify and make them to tremble because they have shown this to those who dwell on the earth. And behold, the names of those angels. The first of them is Shamza, the second Artifqua, and the third Armin, the fourth Kabiel, the fifth Toriel, the sixth Ramiel, and the seventh Daniel, and the eighth Naquiel, and the ninth Barquiel, and the tenth Azazel, and the eleventh Armamaros, and the twelfth Baturjal and the 13th Basisiel, and the 14th Hananel, and the 15th Turiel, and the 16th Semipazel, and the 17th Jeterel, and the 18th Tamiel, and the 19th Turiel, and the 20th Ramiel, and the 21st Azazel. So there's two named Azazel. And these are the chiefs of their angels and their names and their chief ones over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. The name of the first Jokon, that is the one who led astray the sons of God and brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of men. The second was named Abazel and imparted to the holy sons of God evil counsel and led them astray so that they defiled their bodies with the daughters of men. And the third was named Gadarel. He it, is, he it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death, and he led astray Eve, and showed the shield and the coat of mail and the sword of battle, and all the weapons of death to the children of men. And from his hand they have proceeded against those who dwell on the earth from that day and forevermore. And the fourth one name was Penamel. He taught the children of men the bitter and sweet, and taught them all the secrets of their wisdom. And he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper, and thereby many sinned from eternity to eternity and until this day. For men were not created for such a purpose, to give confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink. For men were created exactly like the angels, to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous and death, which destroys everything, could not have taken hold of them, but through this, their knowledge, they are perishing. And through this paper, it is consuming men. The fifth was named Kezja. This is he who showed the children of men all the wicked smithing of spirits and demons and the smithing of the embryo in the womb that it may pass away and bites of the serpent and the smithings which befall through the noontide heat, the son of the serpent named Tabadet. And this is the task of Kazbil, the chief of the oath, which he showed to the holy ones, which he dwelt high above in glory. And its name is Bizqua. This angel requested Michael to show him the hidden name, that he might incite it in the oath so that those might quake before the name and oath who revealed all that was in secret to the children of men and this is the power of this oath for it is powerful and strong and he placed this oath a k in the hand of michael these are the secrets of this oath and they are strong through this oath the heaven was suspended before the world was created and forever. And through it, the earth was founded upon the water. And from the secret recesses of the mountains comes beautiful waters from the creation of the world and unto eternity. And through the oath, the sea was created and its foundation. He set for it the sand against the time of anger and it dare not pass beyond it from the creation of the world into eternity. And through that oath are the depths made fast, and abide and stir not from their place from eternity to eternity. 
and through the oath the sun and moon complete their course, and deviate not from their ordinance from eternity to eternity, and through the oath the stars complete their course, and he calls them by their names, and they answer him from eternity to eternity. And this oath is mighty over them, and through it their paths are preserved, and their course is not destroyed. And there was great joy amongst them, and they blessed and glorified and extolled it, because the name of the Son of Man had been revealed unto them. And he sat on the throne of his glory, and the sum of judgment was given unto the Son of Man. And he caused the sinners to pass away and be destroyed from off the face of the earth. And those who have led the world astray, with chains shall they be bound, and in their assemblage, place of destruction, shall they be imprisoned, and all their works vanish from the face of the earth. And from henceforth there shall be nothing corruptible, for that Son of Man has appeared and has seated himself on the throne of his glory. Even all evil shall pass away before his face, and the word of that Son of Man shall go forth and be strong before the Lord of Spirits. So this is book four, which supposedly should be chapter 17. I'm almost out of coffee, so I may need to go take a break and make some more. Let's read this chapter, though, and we'll continue on. I think we're on that. I mean, we're on page 74, so, you know, that's something. <laughs> chapter 1. Enoch is taken. And it came to pass after this that his name during his lifetime was raised aloft to that son of man and to the Lord of spirits from among those who dwell on the earth. And he was raised aloft on the chariots of the spirit and his name vanished among them. And from that day, I was no longer numbered amongst them. And he set me between the two winds between the north and the west where the angels took the cords to measure for me, the place for the elect and righteous. And there I saw the first fathers and the righteous who from the beginning dwell in that place. And it came to pass after this that my spirit was translated and it ascended into the heavens. I saw the holy sons of God and they were stepping on fire, flames of fire. Their garments were white and their faces shone like snow. And I saw two streams of fire, and the light of that fire shone like hickeneth, and I fell on my face before the Lord of Spirits. I don't know what that word means. Oh, it's a plant. Bul bulbous herb, spring blooming perennials. They are fragrant flowering plants in the family of another word I can't pronounce. And the angel Michael seized me by my right hand and lifted me up and led me forth into all the secrets. And he showed me all the secrets of righteousness. And he showed me all the secrets of the ends of the heaven and all the chambers of all the stars and all the luminaries whence they proceeded before the face of the holy ones. And he translated my spirit into the heaven of heavens. And I saw there, as it were, a structure built of crystals. And between those crystal tongues of living fire. And my spirit saw the girdle which girt that house of fire. And on its four sides were streams full of living fire. And they girt that house. And round about were seraphim cherubic and ophanin and these are they who sleep not and guard the throne of his glory and i saw angels who could not be counted a thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand encircling that house and michael and raphael and gabriel and faniel 
the holy angels who were above the heavens go in and out of that house. And it came forth from that house and Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Faniel and many holy angels without number. And with them, the head of days, his head white and pure as wool and his raiment indescribable. And I fell on my face, and my holy body became relaxed, and my spirit was transfigured. And I cried with a loud voice, with the spirit of power, and blessed and glorified and extolled. And these blessings which went forth out my mouth were well pleasing before the head of days. And that head of days came with Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Faniel, thousands and ten thousands of angels without number. And he came to me and greeted me with his voice and said unto me, This is the Son of Man who is born unto righteousness, and righteousness abides over him, and the righteousness of the head of days forsakes him not. And he said unto me, He proclaims unto thee peace in the name of the world to come. For from hence he proceeded peace since the creation of the world. And so it be unto thee forever and forever and ever. And all shall walk in his ways since righteousness never forsaketh him. And with him will be their dwelling places and with him their heritage. And they shall not be separated from him forever and ever and ever. And so there shall be length of days with that son of man, and righteous shall have peace and an upright way in the name of the Lord of spirits forever and ever. So this should be chapter 18, maybe. <laughs> the book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven and relations of each according to their classes, their dominions, and their season, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, which Uriel, the holy angel, who was with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he showed me all their laws exactly as they are, and how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. And this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, has its rising in eastern portals of the heaven, and its setting in the western portals of the heaven. And I saw six portals in which the sun rises, and six portals in which the sun sets, and the moon rises and sets in these portals. And the leaders of the stars and those whom they lead, six in the east and six in the west, and all following each other in accurately corresponding order. Also many windows to the right and left of these portals. And first there goes forth the great luminary called the sun, and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven. And he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire. The chariot on which he ascends, the wind drives, and the sun goes down from the heaven and returns through the north in order to reach the east and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate portal and shines in the face of the heaven. In this way, he rises in the first month in the great portal, which is the fourth. And in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month are twelve window openings from which proceed a flame when they are opened in their season. When the sun rises in the heaven, he comes forth through that fourth portal thirty mornings in succession and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven. And during this period, the day becomes daily longer and the night nightly shorter in the 13th morning. On that day, the day is longer than the night by a ninth part, 
and the day amounts exactly to 10 parts and the night to eight parts. And the sun rises from that fourth portal and sets in the fourth and returns to the fifth portal of the east 30 mornings and rises from it and sets in the fifth portal. And then the day becomes longer by two parts and amounts to 11 parts. And the night becomes shorter and amounts to seven parts. And it returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises and sets in the sixth portal one. And 30 mornings on account of its sign. On that day, the day becomes longer than the night. And the day becomes double the night. And the day becomes 12 parts. And the night is shortened and becomes six parts. And the sum mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer. And the sun returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises from it and sets 30 mornings. And when 30 mornings are accomplished, the day decreases by exactly one part and becomes 11 parts. The night seven. The sun goes forth from that sixth portal in the west and goes to the east and rises in the fifth portal for 30 mornings and sets in the west again in the fifth western portal. On that day, the day decreases by two parts and amounts to 10 parts and the night to eight parts. And the sun goes forth from that fifth portal and sets in the fifth portal of the west and rises in the fourth portal for one and 30 mornings on account of its sign and sets in the west. On that day, the day is equalized with the night, and the night amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts. And the sun rises from the portal and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises 30 mornings in the third portal and sets in the west in the third portal. And on that day, the night becomes longer than the day, and the night becomes longer than night, a day shorter than day, till the 13th morning, the night amounts exactly to 10 parts and the day to 8 parts. And the sun rises from that third portal and sets in the third portal in the west and returns to the east for 30 mornings, rises in the second portal in the east and in like manner sets in the second portal in the west of the heaven. And on that day, the night amounts to 11 parts and the day to seven parts. And the sun rises on that day from the second portal and sets in the west in the second portal and returns to the east in the first portal for one and 30 mornings and sets in the first portal in the the west of the heaven. And on that day, the night becomes longer and amounts to double of the day. And the night amounts exactly to 12 parts and the day to six. And the sun has traversed the divisions of its orbit and turns again on those divisions of its orbit and enters that portal 30 mornings and sets also in the west opposite to it. And on that night has the night decreased in length by a ninth part. The night has become 11 parts and the day seven parts. And the sun has returned and entered into the second portal in the east and returns to those his divisions of his orbit for 30 mornings, rising and setting. And on that day, the night decreases in length and the night amounts to 10 parts and the day to eight. Oh, I thought it was going to be over. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Where was I? I, was, I think it was in like verses 30. Yeah. And on that day, the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third portal for one and 30 mornings and sets in in the west of the heaven and on that day the night decreases and amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts 
and the night is equal to the day. And the year is exactly as its days, 364. And the length of the day and of the night and the shortness of the day and of the night arise through the course of the sun. These distinct distinctions are made. So it comes that its course becomes daily longer and its course nightly shorter. And this is the law and the course of the sun and his return as often as he returns 60 times and rises forever and ever. And that which rises is the great luminary and is so named according to its appearance, according to the Lord commanded, as the Lord commanded. As he rises, so he sets and decreases not and rests not, but runs day and night. And his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon. But as regards size, they are both equal. And after this law, I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary, which is called the moon. And her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven. And her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind, and light is given to her in measure. And her rising and setting change every month, and her days are like the days of the sun. When her light is uniform, it amounts to the seven part of the light of the sun, and thus she rises. And her first phase in the east comes forth on the 13th morning. And on that day, she becomes visible and constitutes for you the first phase of the moon on the 13th day, together with the sun in the portal where the sun rises. And the one half of her goes forth by seventh part. And her whole circumference is empty, without light, with the exception of one seventh part of it, the 14th part of her light. And when she receives one seventh part of the half of her light, her light amounts to one seventh part of the half thereof. And she sets with the sun, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with him and receives the half of one part of light. And in that night, in the beginning of her morning, is the commencement of the lunar day. The moon sets with the sun and is invisible that night with the 14 parts and the half of one of them. And she rises on that day with exactly a seventh part and comes forth and recedes from the rising of the sun. And her, in her remaining days, she becomes bright in the 13th parts. <clears throat> and I saw another course of a law for her, how according to that law, she performs her monthly revolution. And all these Uriel, the holy angel, who is the leader of them, all showed to me and their positions. And I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me. And I wrote down their months as they were, and the appearance of their lights till 15 days were accomplished. In the single seventh parts, she accomplishes all her light in the east, and in the single seventh parts, accomplishes all her darkness in the west. And in certain months, she alters her settings, and in certain months, she pursues her own particular course. In two months, the moon sets with the sun. In those two middle portals, the third and the fourth, she goes forth for seven days and turns about and returns again through the portal where the sun rises and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes from the sun and in eight days enters the sixth portal from which the sun goes forth. And when the sun goes forth from the fourth portal, she goes forth seven days until she goes forth from the fifth and turns back again in seven days into the fourth portal and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes and enters into the first portal in eight days. And she returns again in seven days into the fourth portal from which the sun goes forth. 
Thus I saw their position, how the moons rose and the sun set in those days. And if five years were added, are added together, the sun has an overplus of 30 days, and all the days which occur to it for one of those five years. When they are full, amounted to 364 days. And the overplus of the sun and of the stars amounted to six days in five years. Six days every year come to 30 days. And the moon falls behind the sun and stars to the number of 30 days. And the sun and the stars bring all the years exactly. So they do not advance or delay in their position by a single day unto eternity but complete the years with perfect justice in 364. In three years, there are uh, 1,092 days, and in five years, 1,820 days, so that in eight years, there are 2,912 days. For the moon alone, the days amount in three years to 1,062 days, and in five years, she falls 50 days behind to the sum there is five to be added 62 days. Oh boy. And in five years, there are 1,770 days so that the moon, the days six in eight years amount to 21,832 days. And Four in eight years, she falls behind to the amount of 80 days. All the 17th days she falls behind in eight years are 80. And the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations and the station of the sun, which rise from the portals through which it rises and sets in 30 days. And the leaders of the heads of the thousands who were placed over the whole creation and over all the stars have also to do with the four interclary days. What's this, what's this word mean? Inserted in the calendar to harmonize with the solar year. Intercalary but separable from their office according to the reckoning of the year. And these render service on the four days, which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year. And owing to them, men go wrong there. For those luminaries truly render service on the world stations. One in the first border, one in the third border, one in heaven, one in the fourth portal, and one in the sixth portal. And the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate 364 stations. For the signs and the times and the years and the days the angel Uriel showed to me, whom the Lord of glory hath set forever over all the luminaries of the heaven and in the heaven and in the world, that they should rule on the face of the heaven and be seen on the earth and be leaders for the day and the night and all the ministering creatures which make their revolution in all the chariots of the heaven. In like manner, 12 doors Uriel showed me open in the circumference of the sun's chariot in the heaven through which the rays of the sun break forth and from them is warmth diffused over the earth when they are opened at their appointed seasons. And for the winds and the spirit of the dew when they are opened, standing open in the heavens at the ends. As for the twelve portals in the heaven at the ends of the earth, out of which go forth the sun, moon, and stars, and all the works of heaven in the east and in the west. There are many windows open to the left and right of them, and one window at its season produces warmth corresponding to those doors from which the stars come forth according as he has commanded them, and wherein they corresponding to their number. And I saw chariots in the heaven running in the world, 
above those portals in which revoke the stars that never set. And one is larger than all the rest, and it is that that makes its course through the entire world. And at the ends of the earth, I saw 12 portals open to all the quarters from which the winds go forth and blow over the earth. Three of them are open on the face of the heavens, and three in the west, and three on the right of the heaven, and three on the left. And the first and the three first are those of the east, and three are of the north, and three are those on the left of the south, and three of the west. Through four of these come winds of blessing and prosperity, and from those Eight come hurtful winds. When they are sent, they bring destruction on all the earth and on the water upon it and on all who dwell thereon and on everything which is in the water and on the land. And the first wind from those portals called the east wind comes forth through the first portal, which is in the east, inclining towards the south from it come forth desolation, drought, heat, and destruction. And through the second portal in the middle comes what is fitting, and from it there come rain and fruitfulness and prosperity and dew. And through the third portal, which lies toward the north, come cold and drought. And after these come forth the south winds through three portals, through the first portal of them inclining uh, to the east comes forth a hot wind. And through the middle portal next to it, there come forth fragrant smells and dew and rain and prosperity and health. And through the third portal lying to the west Come forth dew and rain, locusts and desolation, and after these, the north winds come the seventh portal in the east, come dew and rain, locusts and desolation, and from the middle portal come in a direct direction health and rain and dew and prosperity, and through the third portal in which come cloud and hoarfrost and snow and rain and dew and locusts. Ooh, it's still going. How many, how many verses are there? 113. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a good time to get coffee after this one. And after these four are the west winds through the first portal adjoining the north come forth dew and hoarfrost and cold and snow and frost. And from the middle portal come forth dew and rain and prosperity and blessing. And through the last portal, which adjoins the south, come forth drought and desolation and burning and destruction. And the 12 portals of the four quarters of the heaven, which therewith completed and all their laws and all their plagues and all their benefactions, have I shown to thee the son of Methshula. And the first quarter is called the east because it is the first, and the second the south because the most high will descend there. Yeah, there in quite a special sense, he will he who is blessed forever descend. And the west quarter is named the diminished because there all the luminaries of heaven wane and go down and the fourth quarter named the north is divided into three parts the first of them is for the dwelling of men and the second contains seas of water and the abysses and forests and rivers and darkness and clouds and the third part contains the garden of righteousness I saw seven high mountains, higher than all the mountains, which are on the earth. And thence comes forth hoarfrost. The days, seasons, and years pass away. I saw seven rivers on the earth, larger than all the rivers. One of them coming from the west pours its seas into the great sea. And these two from the north of the sea and pour their waters into the Ethereum Sea in the east, and the remaining four come forth on the side of the north, 
to their own sea. Two of them to the Arethian Sea, and two in the Great Sea discharge themselves there, and some say into the desert. Seven great islands I saw in the sea in the mainland, two in the mainland and five in the Great Sea. And the names of the sun are of the following, the first Azores, the second Tomas. And the moon has four names. The first name is Asanja, and the second Alba, and the third Banese, and the fourth Arese. Area. These are the two luminaries. Their circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and the size of the circumference of both is alike. In the circumference of the sun, there are seven portions of light which are added to it more than to the moon. And a definite measures, it is transferred till the seventh portion of the sun is exhausted. And they are set and enter the portals of the west and make their revolution by the north. Come forth through the eastern portals on the face of the heaven. And when the moon rises, one fourteenth part appears in the heaven, and the light becomes full in her. On the fourteenth day, she accomplishes her light, and the fifteenth parts of the light are transferred to her till the fourteenth day. Her light is accomplished according to the sign of the year, and she becomes fifteen parts, and the moon grows by fourteenth parts. And in her warning, decreases on the first day to 14 parts of her light on the second to 13 parts of light on the third to 12 on the fourth to 11 on the fifth to 10 on the sixth to nine on the seventh to eight on the eighth to seventh on the ninth to six on the 10th to five on the 11th to four on the 12th to three on the 13th to two on the 14th to the half of a seventh, and all her remaining light disappears wholly on the 15th. And in certain months, the month has 29 days, and once 28. And Uriel showed me another law. When light is transferred to the moon, and on which side it is transferred to her by the sun, During all the period during which the moon is growing in her light, she is transferring it to herself when opposite to the sun during the 14th day shear. Light is accomplished in the heaven, and when she is illuminated throughout, her light is accomplished full in the heaven. And on the first day, she is called the new moon. For on that day, the light rises upon her. She becomes full moon exactly on the day. And when the sun sets in the west and from the east, she rises at night. And the moon shines the whole night through till the sun rises over against her. And the moon is seen over against the sun. On the side whence the light of the moon comes forth, There again she wanes till all the light vanishes, and all the days of the month are at an end, and her circumference is empty, void of light. And three months she makes of thirty days, and at her time she makes three months of twenty-nine days each, in which she accomplishes her waning in the first period of time, and in the first portal for 177 days. And in the time of her going out, she appears for three months, 30 days each, and for three months, she appears 29 each. And at night, she appears like a man for 20 days each time. And by day, she appears like the heaven, and there is nothing else in her save her light. And now, my son, I have shown thee everything, and the law of all the stars of heaven is completed. And he showed me all the laws of these for every day and for every season of bearing rule, 
and for every year and for its going forth and for the order prescribed to it every month and every week and the waning of the moon which takes place in the sixth portal for in this fourth four sixth portal her light is accomplished and after that there is the beginning of the waning which takes place in the first portal in its season till 177 days are accomplished reckoned according to weeks uh, 25 and two days she falls behind the sun and the order of the stars exactly five days in the course of one period and when this place which thou seest has been traversed such is the picture and sketch of every luminary which uriel the archangel who is their leader showed unto me okay now we're at chapter three I'm going to go um, take a break, though, and make a cup of coffee because that was pretty grueling. <laughs> and uh, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And we should be on chapter... I'm going to t do a test. So we should be on chapter... <laughs> I don't even know at this point. Um, I'm going to guess that we should be on chapter... 14? Or... 19? Let's, let's test it out. No. Okay, so maybe, maybe 19.
No. Yeah. Okay, so... Ooh. Okay, so I understand it now. Uh, this chapter, that this... this the uh, I have two different uh, versions opened up. It fragments the chapters into much smaller sections than this Internet Archive translation does. And so, you know, roughly I've read about half the book now in, you know, three hours time. And um, I thought I was only like. 20 chapters in or so <laughs> in a hundred chapter book. No, I'm, I'm probably like way down here. So, um, I close that and it's gone forever. Um, <laughs> we're just going to read through. We're on chapter three. Um, but realize this is like book three. So, um, book three of the complete Enoch. So I don't know what that means. We're roughly halfway through the book, though. Uh, oh. Okay. Let's get started. So chapter three. And in those days, the angel Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have shown thee everything, Enoch, and I have revealed everything to thee that thou shouldest see the sun and this moon and the leaders of the stars and in the heaven and all those who turn them their tasks and times and departures and in the days of sinners the years shall be shortened and their seed shall be tardy on their lands and fields and all the things on the earth shall alter and shall not appear in their time and the rain shall be kept back and the heaven shall withhold it and in those times, the fruits of the earth shall be backward and shall not grow in their time. And the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time. And the moon shall alter her order and not appear at her time. And in those days, the sun shall be seen and he shall journey in the evening on the extremity of the great chariot in the west and shall shine more brightly then accords with the order of light and many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order and these shall alter their orbits and tasks and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them. And the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners and through and the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them. And they shall be altered from all their ways. Yeah, they shall err and they shall take them to be gods. <laughs> Sounds like they're talking about astrology. And evil shall be multiplied upon them. And punishment shall come upon them so as to destroy all. And he said unto me, observe, Enoch, these heavenly tablets and read what is written thereon. And mark every individual fact. And I observed the heavenly tablets and read everything which was written and un understood everything and read the book of all the deeds of mankind and of all the children of flesh that shall be upon the earth to the remotest generations. And for with I blessed the great Lord, the King of glory forever, in that he has made all these works of the Lord. And I exalted the Lord because of his patience and blessed him because of the children of men. And after that, I said, blessed is the man who dies in righteousness and goodness concerning whom there is no book of unrighteousness written and against whom no day of judgment shall be found. And those seven holy ones brought me and placed me on the earth before the door of my house and said to me, declare everything to thy son, Methshula, and show to all thy children 
that no flesh is righteous in the sight of the Lord, for he is their creator. One year we will leave thee with thy son, till thou givest thy commands, that thou mayest teach thy children and record for them and testify to all thy children, and in the second year they shall ta uh, take thee from their midst. Let thy heart be strong, for the good shall announce righteousness to the good. The righteous with the righteous shall rejoice, and shall offer congratulation to one another. But the sinners shall die with the sinners, and the apostate go down with the apostate. And those who practice righteousness shall die on account of the deeds of men and be taken away on account of the doings of the godless. And in those days they ceased to speak to me, and I came to my people blessing the Lord of the world. And now my son Methshula... All these things I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee. And I have revealed to thee everything and given the books concerning all these. So perverse, per, so preserve my son Methshula, the books from thy father's hand, and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world. I have given wisdom to thee and to thy children, and thy children that shall be to thee, that they may give it to their children for generations, this wisdom that passeth their thought. And those who understand it shall not sleep, but shall listen with the ear, that they may learn this wisdom. And it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food. Blessed are all the righteous, blessed are all those who walk in the way of righteousness, and sin not as the sinners. In the reckoning of all their days, in which the sun traverses the heaven, entering into and departing from the portals for thirty days, and with the heads of thousands of the order of the stars, together with the four which are intercalculated, which divide the four portions of the year, which lead them and enter with them four days. Owing to them, men shall be at fault, and not reckon them in the whole reckoning of the year. Yeah, men shall be at fault, and not recognize them accurately. For they belong to the reckoning of the year and are truly recorded forever. One in the first portal, and one in the third, and one in the fourth, and one in the sixth. And the year is completed in 364 days. And the account thereof is accurate, and the recorded reckoning thereof exact. For the luminaries, and the months and festivals and years and days has Uriel shown and revealed to me, to whom the Lord of the whole creation of the world hath subjected the host of heaven. And he has power over night and day in the heaven to cause the light to give light to men, sun, moon, and stars, and all the powers of the heaven which revolve in their circular chariots. And these are the orders of the stars, which set in their places and in their seasons and festivals and months. And these are the names of those who lead them, who watch that they enter at their times and in their orders of their seasons, in their months, in their periods of dominion and in their positions. Their four leaders who divide the four parts of the year enter first, and after them the twelve leaders of the orders who divide the months, and for the three hundred and sixty there are heads over thousands who divide the days, and for the four interclary, interclary days there are the leaders which sunder the four parts of the year. 
And these heads over thousands and intercalculated between leader and leader, each behind a station, but their leaders make the division. And these are the names of the leaders who divide the four parts of the year, which are ordained uh, Milk, Makil, Hamalek, and Majal, and Nareel. And the names of those who lead them Adonarel, and Isarothel, Elamalel. The, uh, these three follow the leaders of the orders, and there is one that follows the three leaders of the orders, which follow uh, those leaders of stations that divide the four parts of the year. In the beginning of the year, Machaliel rises first in rules, who is named Tomini and son, and all the days of his dominion, whilst he bears rule over ninety one days. And these are the signs of the days which are to be seen on earth in the days of his dominion, sweat and heat and calms, and all the trees bear fruit, and leaves are produced on all the trees, and the harvest of wheat, and the rose flowers, and all the flowers which come forth in the field. But the trees of the winter season become withered. And these are the names of the leaders which are under them. Berkiel, Zala Bazel, and another who is added a head of a thousand, called Hilu Joseph. And the days of the dominion of this are at an end. <laughs> The next leader after him is Hamalelech, whom one names the shining sun, and all the days of his light are 91 days, and these are the signs of days on the earth, glowing heat and dryness, and the trees ripen their fruits and produce all their fruits ripe and ready, and the sheep pair and become pregnant and the fruits of the earth are gathered in, and everything that is in the fields, and the wine press, and these things take place in the days of his dominion. These are the names and the orders, and the leaders of those heads of thousands. Kadijel, Kiel, and Heel, and the name of the head of a thousand which is added to them. Asaphil, and the days of his dominion are at an end. <clears throat> oh, right. And now, my son, Methshula, I will show thee all my visions, which I have seen, recounting them before thee. Two visions I saw before I took a wife, and the one was quite unlike the other. The first vision I I was learning to write. The second before I took thy mother, I saw a terrible vision. And regarding them, I prayed to the Lord. I had laid me down in the house of my grandfather, Mahalaliel. I saw in a vision how the heaven collapsed and was borne off and I fell to the earth. And when it fell to the earth, I saw how the earth was swallowed up in a great abyss, and the mountains were suspended on mountains, and hills sank down on hills, and high trees were rent from their stems, and hurled down and sunk in the abyss. And thereupon a word fell into my mouth. And I lifted up to cry aloud, and said, The earth is destroyed. And my grandfather, Mahaliel, waked me as I lay near him and said unto me, Why dost thou cry so, my son, and why dost thou make such lamentation? And I recounted to him the whole vision which I had seen. And he said unto me, A terrible thing hast thou seen, my son, and of grave moment is thy dream vision. As to the secrets, if all the sin of the earth, 
it must sink into the abyss and be destroyed with great destruction. And now, my son, arise and make petition to the Lord of glory. Since thou art a believer that a remnant may remain on the earth and that he may not destroy the whole earth. My son, from heaven all this will come upon the earth, and upon the earth there shall be great destruction. After that I rose and prayed and implored and besought and wrote down my prayer for the generations of the world, and I will show everything to thee, my son Methshula. And when I had gone forth below and seen the heaven and the sun rising in the east and the moon setting in the west and a few stars and the whole earth and everything as he had known it in the beginning, then I blessed the Lord of judgment and exalted him because he had made the sun go forth from the windows of the east and he ascended and rose on the face of the heaven and set out and kept traversing the path shown unto him. And I lifted up my hands in righteousness and blessed the holy and great one and spake with the breath of my mouth and with the tongue of flesh, which God has made for the children of the flesh of men, that they should speak therewith. And he gave them breath and a tongue and a mouth that they should speak therewith. Blessed be thou, O Lord, King, great and mighty in thy greatness, Lord of the whole creation of the heaven, King of kings and God of the whole world, and thy power and kingship and greatness abide forever and ever. And throughout all generations, thy dominion and all the heavens are thy throne forever, and the whole earth thy footstool forever and ever. For thou hast made and thou rulest all things, and nothing is too hard for thee. Wisdom departs not from the place of thy throne, nor turns away from thy presence. And thou knowest and seest and hearest everything, and there is nothing hidden from thee, for thou seest everything. And now the angels of thy heavens are guilty of trespass and upon the flesh of men abideth thy wrath until the day of judgment. And now, O God and Lord and great King, I implore and beseech thee to fulfill my prayer to leave me a prosperity, a posterity on earth and not destroy all the flesh of man and make the earth without inhabitant so that there should be an eternal destruction. And now, my Lord, destroy from the earth the flesh which has aroused thy wrath, but the flesh of righteousness and uprightness establish as a plant of the eternal seed. And hide not thy face from the prayer of thy servant, O Lord. And after this I saw another dream, and I will show the whole dream to thee, my son. And Enoch lifted up and spake to his son Methshula. To thee, my son, will I speak. Hear my words. Incline thine ear to the dream vision of thy father. Before I took my mother Edna, I saw in a vision on my bed, and behold, a bull came forth from the earth. And that bull was white, and after it came forth a heifer. And along with this came forth two bulls one of them black and another red. And that black bull gored the red one and pursued him over the earth. And thereupon I could no longer see that red bull. But that black bull grew and that heifer went with him. And I saw that many oxen proceeded from him, which resembled and followed him. And that cow, the first one, went from the presence of that first bull in order to seek the red one but found him not, and lamented with great lamentation over him, and sought him. And I looked till that first bull came to her, and quieted her, and from that time onward she cried no more. And after that she bore another white bull, and after him she bore many bulls and black cows. 
And I saw in my sheet sleep that white bull likewise grow and become a great white bull. And from him proceed many white bulls, and they resembled him. And they began to beget many white bulls, which resembled them, one following the other, many. And again, I saw with mine eyes as I slept, and I saw the heaven above, and behold, a star fell from heaven, and it rose and eat and pastured among those oxen. And after that, I saw the large and the black oxen, and behold, they all changed their stalls and pastures and their cattle and began to live with each other. And again, I saw in the vision and looked towards the heaven. Behold, I saw many stars descend and cast themselves down uh, from heaven to the first star. And they became bulls amongst those cattle and pastured with them amongst them. And I looked at them and I saw, and behold, they all let out their privy members like horses and began to cover the cows of the oxen. And they all became pregnant and bare elephants, camels, and asses. And all the oxen feared them and were affrighted at them and began to bite with their teeth and to devour and to gore with their horns. And they began moreover to devour those oxen. And behold, all the children of the earth began to tremble and quake before them and to flee from them. And again, I saw how they began to gore each other and to devour each other. And the earth began to cry aloud. As I raised mine eyes again to heaven, I saw in the vision and behold, there came forth from heaven beings who were like white men. And four went forth from that place, and three with them. And those three that had last come forth grasped me by my hand, and took me up away from the generations of the earth, and raised me up to a lofty place, and showed me a tower raised high above the earth, and all the hills were lower. And said unto me, Remain here till thou seest everything that befalls those elephants, camels, and asses, and the stars, and the oxen, and all of them. And I saw one of those four who had come forth first, and seized that first star, which had fallen from heaven, and bound it hand and foot, and cast it into the abyss. Now, that abyss was narrow and deep and horrible and dark. And one of them drew a sword and gave it to those elephants and camels and asses. Then they began to smite each other, and the whole earth quaked because of them. And as I was beholding in the vision, Lou, one of those four, who was who had come forth stoned them from heaven and gathered and took all the great stars whose privy members were like those of horses and bound them all hand and foot and cast them in an abyss of the earth and one of those four went to that white bull and instructed him in secret without his being terrified he was born a bull and became a man, and built for himself a great vessel, and dwelt thereon. And three bulls dwelt with him in that vessel, and they also covered in. And again I raised mine eyes towards heaven, and saw a lofty roof, with seven water turrets thereon, and those torrents flowed with much water into an enclosure. And I saw again, and behold, fountains were opened on the surface of that great enclosure. And that water began to swell and rise upon the surface. And I saw that the enclosure till its surface was covered with water. And the water, the darkness and mist increased upon it. And as I looked at the height of that water, that water had risen above the height of that enclosure and was streaming over the enclosure, and it stood upon the earth. 
and all that the cattle of that enclosure were gathered together until I saw how they sank and were swallowed up and perished in that water. But that vessel floated on the water while all the oxen and elephants and camels and asses sank to the bottom with all the animals so that I could no longer see them. And they were not able to escape, to perish and sank into the depths. And again, I saw in the vision till those water turrets were removed from that high roof and the chasms of the earth were leveled up and other abysses were opened. This is like an intense vision. <laughs> then the water began to run down into these till the earth became visible, but that vessel saddled on the earth, and the darkness retired and light appeared. But the white bull, which had become a man, came out of that vessel, and the three bulls with him. And one of those three was like was white like that bull, and one of them was red as blood, and one black, and that white bull departed from them. And they began to bring forth beasts of the field and birds, so that there arose different genera, lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, hyenas, wild boars, foxes, squirrels, swine, falcons, vultures, kites, eagles, and ravens. And among them was born a white bull. And they began to bite one another. But that white bull, which was born amongst them, begot a wild ass and a white bull with it. And the wild asses multiplied. But that bull, which was born from him, begot a black wild boar and a white sheep. And the former begot many boars. But that white sheep begat twelve sheep. And when those 12 sheep had grown, they gave up one of them to the asses. And those asses again gave up that sheep to the wolves. And that sheep grew up among the wolves. And the Lord brought the 11 sheep to live with it and to pasture with it among the wolves. And they multiplied and became many flocks of sheep. And the wolves began to fear them, and they oppressed them until they destroyed. Cry aloud on account of their little ones, and to complain unto their Lord. And a sheep which had been saved from the wolves fled, and escaped to the wild asses. I saw the sheep, how they lamented and cried, and besought their Lord with all their might till that Lord of the sheep descended at the voice of the sheep from a lofty abode and came to them and pastured them. And he called that sheep which had escaped the wolves and spake with it concerning the wolves that it should admonish them not to touch the sheep. And the sheep went to the wolves according to the word of the Lord and another sheep met it and went with it. And the two went and entered together into the assembly of the wolves and spake with it and admonished them not to touch the sheep from henceforth. And thereupon I saw the wolves and how they oppressed the sheep increasingly with their power. And the sheep cried aloud. And the Lord came to the sheep and they began to smite those wolves and the wolves began to make lamentation. But the sheep became quiet and for, uh, forthwith ceased to cry out. And I saw the sheep till they departed amongst the wolves, but the eyes of the wolves were blinded and those wolves departed in pursuit of the sheep with all their power. And the Lord of the sheep went with them as their leader and all his sheep followed him, and his face was dazzling and glorious and terrible to behold. But the wolves began to pursue those sheep till they reached the sea of water. And the sea was divided, and the water stood on 
this side and on that before their face. And their Lord led them and placed himself between them and the wolves. And as those wolves did not yet see the sheep, they proceeded into the midst of that sea. And the wolves followed the sheep, and those wolves ran after them into that sea. And when they saw the Lord of the sheep, they turned to flee before his face. But that sea gathered itself together and became as it had been created. And the water swelled and rose till it covered those wolves. And I saw till all the wolves who pursued those sheep perished and were drowned. But the sheep escaped from that water and went forth into a wilderness where there was no water and no grass. And they began to open their eyes and to see. And I saw the Lord of the sheep pasturing them and giving them water and grass and that sheep going and leading them. And that sheep ascended to the summit of the lofty rock, and the Lord of the sheep sent it to them. And after that, I saw the Lord of the sheep who stood before them, and his appearance was great and terrible and majestic, and all those sheep who saw him and were afraid before his face. And they all feared and trembled because of him. And they cried to that sheep with them, which was amongst them. We are not able to stand before our Lord or to behold him. And that sheep, which led them again, ascend to the summit of that rock. But the sheep began to be blinded and to wander from the way which he had showed them. But that sheep, what not thereof? And the Lord of the sheep was wrathful and, and, and exceedingly against them. And that sheep discovered it and went down from the summit of the rock and came to the sheep and found the greatest part of them blinded and fallen away. And when they saw it, they feared and trembled at its presence and desired to return to their folds. And that sheep took other sheep with it and came to those sheep which had fallen away and began to slay them. And the sheep feared its presence and thus the sheep brought back those sheep that had fallen away and they returned to their folds. And I saw in this vision till that sheep became a man and built a house for the Lord of the sheep and placed all the sheep in that house. And I saw till the sheep which had met that sheep which led them fell asleep. And I saw till all the great sheep perished and little ones arose in their place. And they came to a pasture and approached a stream of water. Then that sheep, their leader, which had become a man, withdrew from them and fell asleep. And all the sheep sought it and cried over it with a great crying. And I saw till they left off crying for that sheep and crossed the stream of water. And there arose the two sheep as leaders in the place of those which had led them and fallen asleep. And I saw till the sheep came to a goodly place and a pleasant and glorious land. And I saw till those sheep were satisfied and that house stood amongst them in the pleasant land. And sometimes their eyes were opened and sometimes blinded till another sheep arose and led them and brought them all back and their eyes were opened. And the dogs and the foxes and the wild boars began to devour those sheep till the Lord of the sheep raised up another sheep, a ram from their midst, which led them. And that ram begat to butt on either side of those fox, dogs, foxes, and wild boars till he destroyed them all. And that sheep whose eyes were opened saw that ram, which was amongst the sheep, till it forsook its glory and began to butt those sheep and trampled upon them and behaved 
itself unseemingly. And the Lord of the sheep sent the lamb to another lamb and raised it to begin a ram. Raised it to being a ram and leader of the sheep instead of that ram which had forsaken its glory. And it went to it and spake to it alone and raised it to being a ram and became it the prince and leader of the sheep. But during all these things, those dogs oppress the sheep. And the first ram pursued the second ram, and that second ram arose and fled before it. And I saw till those dogs pulled down the first ram. And that second ram arose and led the little sheep, and those sheep grew and multiplied. But all the dogs and foxes and wild boars feared and fled before it. And that ram butted and killed the wild beasts. And those wild beasts had no longer any power among the 49 sheep and robbed them no more of aught. And that ram begot many sheep and fell asleep. And a little sheep became ram in its steed and became prince and leader of those sheep and that house became great and broad, and it was built for those sheep. A tower lofty and great was built on the house for the Lord of the sheep, and that house was low, but the tower was elevated and lofty, and the Lord of the sheep stood on that tower, and they offered a full table before him. And again, I saw those sheep that they had again erred and went many ways and forsook that their house and the Lord of the sheep called some from amongst the sheep and sent them to the sheep. But the sheep began to slay them and one of them was saved and was not slain and it sped away and cried aloud over the sheep. And they sought to slay it, but the Lord of the sheep saved it from the sheep and brought it up to me and caused it to dwell there. And many other sheep he sent to those sheep to testify unto them and lament over them. And after that, I saw that when they forsook the house of the Lord, his tower, uh, they fell away entirely. And their eyes were blinded, and I saw the Lord of the sheep, how he wrought much slaughter amongst them in their herds, until those sheep invited that slaughter and betrayed his place. And he gave them over into the hands of the lions and tigers and wolves and hyenas, and into the hand of the foxes and to all the wild beasts. And those wild beasts began to tear into pieces those sheep. And I saw that he forsook that their house and their tower and gave them all into the hand of lions to tear and devour them into the hand of all the wild beasts. And I began to cry aloud with all my power and to appeal to the Lord of the sheep and to represent to him in regard to the sheep that they were devoured by all the wild beasts. But he remained unmoved, though he saw it and rejoiced that they were devoured and swallowed and robbed and left them to be devoured in the hand of all the beasts. And he called 70 shepherds and cast those sheep to them that they might pasture them. And he spake to the shepherds and their companions, let each individual of you pasture the sheep henceforth and everything that I shall command you that do ye and I will deliver them over unto you duly numbered and tell you which of them are to be destroyed and them destroy ye and he gave over unto them those sheep 
And he called another and spake unto him, observe and mark everything that the shepherds will do to those sheep, for they will destroy more than them than I have commanded. And every excess and the destruction which will be wrought through the shepherds. Record how many they destroy according to my command and how many according to their own caprice. Record against every individual shepherd all the destruction he effects and read out before me by number how many they destroy and how many they deliver over for destruction that I may have this as a testimony against them and know every deed of the shepherds that I may comprehend and see what they do, whether or not they abide by my command, which I have commanded them, but they shall not know it and thou shall not declare it to them nor admonish them, but only record against each individual all the destruction which the shepherds effect each in his time, and lay it all before me. And I saw till the shepherds pastured in their season, and they, and they began to slay and destroy more uh, than they were bidden. And they delivered those sheep into the hands of the lions. And the lions and the tigers eat and devoured the greater part of those sheep, and the wild boars eat along with them. And they burnt that tower and demolished that house. And I became incessantly sorrowful over that tower because that house of the sheep was demolished. And afterwards, I was unable to see if those sheep entered that house. And the shepherds and their associates delivered over those sheep to all the wild beasts to devour them. And each one of them received in his time a definite number. It was written by the other in a book, how many each one of them destroy of them. And each one slew and destroyed many more than was prescribed. And I began to weep and lament on account of those sheep. And thus in the vision, I saw that one who wrote how he wrote down every one that was destroyed by the shepherds day by day and carried up and laid down, and showed actually the whole book of the Lord of the sheep. Everything that they had done, and all that each one of them had made away with, and all that they had given over to destruction. And the book was read before the Lord of the sheep. And he took the book from his hand, and he read it, and sealed it, and laid it down. And forthwith, I saw how the shepherds pastured for twelve hours. And behold, three of those sheep turned back and came and entered and began to build up all that had fallen down of that house. But the wild boars tried to hinder them, but they were not able. And they began again to build as before, and they reared up that tower, and it was named the High Tower. And they began again to place a table before the tower, but all the bread on it was polluted and not pure. And as touching all this, the eyes of those sheep were blinded, so that they saw not, and their shepherds likewise. And they delivered them in large numbers to their shepherds for destruction. And they trampled the sheep with their feet and devoured them. And the Lord of the sheep remained unmoved till all the sheep were dispersed over the field and mingled with them. And they did not save them out of the hand of the beasts. And this one who wrote the book carried it up and showed it and read it before the Lord of the sheep, implored him on their account and besought him on their account as he showed him all the doings of the shepherds and gave testimony before him against all the shepherds. And he took the actual book and laid it down beside him and departed. And I saw till that in this manner, 35 shepherds undertook the pasturing and they 
severally completed their periods, as did the first, and others received them in their hands to pasture them for their period, each shepherd in their own period. And after that, I saw in my vision all the birds of heaven coming, the eagles, the vultures, the kites, the ravens, but the eagles led all the birds. They began to devour those sheep and to pick out their eyes and devour their flesh. And the sheep cried out because their flesh was being devoured by the birds. And as for me, I looked and lamented in my, in my sleep over that shepherd who pastured the sheep. And I saw until those sheep were devoured by the dogs and eagles and kites, and they left neither flesh nor skin nor sinew remaining on them, till only their bones stood there, and their bones too fell to the earth, and the sheep became few. And I saw until the twenty-three had undertaken and pasturing and completed in their several periods fifty-eight times. But behold, lambs were born by those white sheep, and they began to open their eyes and to see and to cry to the sheep. Yeah, they cried to them, but they did not hearken to what they said to them. But they were exceedingly deaf, and their eyes were very exceedingly blinded. And I saw in the vision how the ravens flew upon those lambs, and took one of those lambs, and dashed the sheep in pieces, and devoured them. And I saw till horns grew upon those lambs, and the ravens cast down their horns, and I saw till there sprouted a great horn of one of those sheep, and their eyes were opened. And it looked at them, and their eyes opened, and it cried to the sheep, and the ram saw it, and all ran to it. And notwithstanding, all those eagles and vultures and ravens and kites still kept tearing the sheep and swooing down upon them and devouring them till the sheep remained silent. But the lambs lamented and cried out. And those ravens fought and battled with it and sought to lay low its horn, but they had no power over it. All the eagles and vultures and ravens and kites were all gathered together and there came with them all the sheep of the field. Yeah, they all came together and helped each other to break that horn of the ram. And I saw till a great sword was given to the sheep, and the sheep proceeded against all the beasts of the field to slay them. And all the beasts of the birds of heaven fled before their face. And I saw that man who wrote the book according to the command of the Lord, till he opened that book concerning the destruction which those twelve last shepherds had wrought, and showed that they had destroyed much more than their predecessors before the Lord of the sheep. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep came unto them, and took his hand, the staff of his wrath, and smote the earth, and the earth clave asunder, and all the beasts and all the birds of heaven fell from among those sheep, and were swallowed up in the earth, and it covered them. And I saw till a throne was erected in the pleasant land, and the Lord of the sheep sat himself thereon. And the other took the sealed books, and opened those books before the Lord of the sheep. And the Lord called those men, the seven first white ones, and commanded that they should bring before him, beginning with the first star, which led the way, all the stars whose privy members were like those of horses, and they brought them all before him. <clears throat> and he said to that man who wrote before him, being one of those seven white ones, and said unto him, Take those seventy shepherds to whom I delivered, and the sheep, and who, taking them on their own authority, slew more than I commanded them. And behold, they were all bound, 
I saw, and they all stood before him. And the judgment was held first over the stars, and they were judged and found guilty and went to the place of condemnation, and they were cast into an abyss full of fire and flaming and full of pillars of fire. And those 70 shepherds were judged and found guilty, and they were cast into that fiery abyss. And I saw at that time how a like abyss was opened in the midst of the earth, full of fire, and they brought those blinded sheep, and they were all judged and found guilty and cast into this fiery abyss, and they burned. Now this abyss was to the right of that house. And I saw those sheep burning and their bones burning. And I stood up to see till they folded up that old house and carried off all the pillars and all the beams and ornaments of the house were at the same time folded up with it. And they carried it off and laid it in a place in the south of the land. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep brought a new house greater and loftier than the first and set it up in the place of the first, which had beer folded up. All its pillars were new and its ornaments were newer, new and larger than those of the first, the old one, which he had taken away and all the sheep were within it. And I saw all the sheep which had been left and all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the heaven, falling down and doing homage to those sheep and making petition to it and obeying them in everything. And thereafter, those three who were clothed in white and had seized me by my hand, who had taken me up before, and the hand of that ram also seizing hold of me, they took me up and set me down in the midst of those sheep before the judgment took place. And those sheep were all white, and their wool was abundant and clean. And all that had been destroyed and dispersed, and all the beasts of the field, and all the birds of the heaven, assembled in that house, and the Lord of the sheep rejoiced with great joy, because they were all good, and had returned to his house. And I saw till they laid down that sword, which had been given to the sheep, and they brought it back into the house, and it was sealed before the presence of the Lord, and all the sheep were invited into that house, but it held them not. And the eyes of them were all open, and they saw the good, and there was not one among them who did not see. And I saw that house was large and broad and very full. And I saw that a white bull was born with large horns and all beasts of the field and all the birds of the air feared him and made petition to him all the time. And I saw till all their generations were transformed and they all became white bulls and the first among them became a lamb and that lamb became a great animal and had great black horns on its head. And the Lord of the sheep rejoiced over it and over all the oxen. And I slept in their midst and I awoke and I saw everything. This is the vision which I saw while I slept. And I awoke and blessed the Lord of righteousness and gave him glory. Then I wept with a great weeping and my tears stayed not till I could no longer endure it. When I saw, they flowed on account of what I had seen. For everything shall come and be fulfilled. And all the deeds of men in their order were shown to me. On that night, I remembered the first dream. And because of it, I wept. And I was troubled because I had seen that vision. Okay, so that is um, the end of book four. And we are on to a new book and we're at roughly 111 pages. So I might be able to read the rest of it tomorrow, maybe. And uh, yeah, 193 pages. I, I su suppose, I suspect there's probably like a 10 page or a 20 page like 
um, sort of index and such, but I don't know. <laughs> I could take a look right now. Let me, um, I can't change the title currently, or can I? Oh, I can. So this goes from, I'm going to erase the chapter because that doesn't really, that's not correct. And I am going to put 62 through 111. Okay. So I'm going to save that. What? Okay. I'm just going to put 111 right here. <laughs> Good grief. Um, so let's go down to like 192. Okay, so never mind. I was incorrect. It appears that the text goes all the way down till basically. No, wait. Revelations 11. Does this have Revelations on it? Book of Jubilees. Compare these four verses. Um, okay, so it has like a study guide in it as well. So it seems like maybe 185 is when the book ends. Unless this is a totally different book, because I see it. I just skimming through some of the text. It seemed like it said the the text of Solomon. These super long verses or, or chapters. I wish they would have like condensed them a little. Even that. Um, vision they didn't need to make it like one just continuing long they could have broke it up into segments and there's nothing against uh there's nothing to say that that was uh wrong except it's just grueling to have to continually keep reading and reading and reading uh till you get um So this is uh, the Testament of Solomon. And then you're going to have more of Enoch. Where's the end of... Oh, so I, I might even be... Am I like almost done with the, the current book? The actual like book? Okay, well, I'm at 137. Let's go to uh, let's go to the title. See if there's a table of contents. Oh, is that it? Okay, so the ending is 129. I guess I could read it right now, but I'm not going to. So um, we'll finish up tomorrow. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. So um, yeah, let's end with uh, prayer and we'll get out of here. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, we thank you for this time to read um, the book of Enoch, which was thought to be lost. 
and was found when people traveled to uh, Ethiopia and it's part of their canon. We ask you that you guide us in accordance with this reading to adhere to your will. We ask this through the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody, and have a great, happy holiday.